to my Ottoman Makeover tutorial. I'm going to be sharing with you how I transformed this Ottoman. Now, we've had this thing for about six years, and I was, to be honest, about ready to just kick it to the curb. It was gross, it had stains on it, it was torn, it was missing a button. It was pretty much, in my mind, beyond repair. I'm gonna show you how I was able to get this pretty look for this Ottoman, totally revive it for very little money. That's Maple, so there she is. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like before. Please brace yourself, it is disgusting like i said friends this is what it's looking like i know it's in really really bad shape but instead of selling it for five bucks i thought that i could go ahead and try to fix this thing up i went ahead and sewed that little buttonhole closed and I did repair that little button with a washer, some dental floss, and a screw. It was very simple to do this. If you're interested in learning how to repair a button maybe that you have missing in your furniture without removing the entire top piece and starting over from scratch, I'll be happy to help. Just let me know in the comments below. And now I'm just going to give it a good cleaning with my vacuum cleaner. I just want to make sure it doesn't have any cracker crumbs or dirt from our feet. We do use this sometimes like a footstool. So once I get done with that, I'm going to address those little pills. Is that what you call it? <laughs> those little, little balls that kind of roll up all over um, an inexpensive fabric. Pretty much as soon as I bought this thing, it started doing that. So I'm just removing the pills. what it was but just doing this was so relaxing it's kind of like dr pimple popper or when they remove blackheads on youtube if you're a person that enjoys that kind of thing like i do let me know in the comments but look how much this lint remover took off Now that we got that done, I'm going to be mixing a little bit of fabric softener into an old spray bottle. Um, it's going to be four parts water, one part fabric softener. And the color paint I'm using is Waverly Chalk Paint and Plaster. And then once I'm done, I'm going to be sealing it with the Waverly Clear Wax. And my accent paint is this beautiful metallic gold from Folk Art. I've got all of these paints at Walmart. So the first thing we're going to do is just start spraying our fabric down with the fabric softener and water mixture. This is just going to give us a good base for our diluted paint to really spread out. Um, my paint is a 50-50 paint and water mixture, so before I started painting, I did stir it up really well and the consistency is really, really runny. It's not like a thick paint. You want it to be more like you're dyeing your fabric because essentially that's what you're doing. You're dyeing your fabric. You're not really painting it. You're tinting it with diluted paint and that's the key to keeping your fabric really soft. But as the paint goes onto that wet fabric, it just absorbs it. And so it does take several layers to get your desired look. The longer it dries, the thinner it starts to look. So you'll see a little bit later on in this process. prepare you for this next clip. This is my husband's personality, 100%. He didn't want to be in the shot, and so this is what he did. He is absolutely crazy. This is what I have to deal with, y'all. Hey, will you give me a pepper This is 
is what we've got so far. It's not looking too great, a little splotchy, but I think it's pretty wet right now. I think as it dries, it will change, like maybe even out the color. So I've never done this before. I don't really know what to expect, but that is the first coat. I'm gonna let it dry overnight. Then I'm supposed to sand it, just I guess to get rid of like, like the roughness of chalk paint and then um, we'll do the process again. I think we'll have to do it maybe three or four times before it gets to be like a real solid white. Okay, this is the part that may have led me astray just a little bit. I have zero patience, so I did not wait. <laughs> I just said I needed to wait overnight, and yet here I am an hour later. Um, adding another coat of paint. So because I did this, um, it turned out a little bit more stiff um, as far as texture goes than it would have. Um, you know, I should have waited overnight. I didn't. It is gonna be used more for a coffee table. So for me, it was okay if it was a little bit more firm. But if you're wanting that soft fabric, don't do what I did. You do need to wait um, until it's fully dried and then sand, and then you can go back over it with your diluted paint mixture. And you basically just rinse, wash, repeat. Is that wrong? Wash, rinse, repeat. And then you will get a beautiful final result. Regardless, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And here I am on the next day. I've just sanded my dry paint and I actually did re-vacuum it just to get any dust that was remaining. What you wanna do before each layer of paint is just re-spray your fabric. You wanna wet your fabric back down with your um, fabric softener and water mixture. And then you're just gonna continue to add layers, let it dry, sand, and vacuum it back up and just keep going in that pattern until you get your desired look. I actually am using this beautiful gold paint I got for less than $3 at Walmart and I'm using a Q-tip. All I'm doing is just um, dabbing it over these nail heads to add a little touch of gold. This looks so beautiful. It's funny to me how the simplest touches can add such a big impact on your piece, but I am extremely happy with how this looks. It was very, very easy to accomplish. Now for my favorite part, I am just going to go ahead and style this ottoman. It looks so good. It looks brand new. I still need to seal it with the clear wax. That's going to give it a little added protection. So I'm definitely going to do that um, a little bit down the line. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and get it in my living room and out of my kitchen. I styled it with an acrylic tray and I sat that little silver leaf bowl on it with a beautiful copper candle. I love how this just warms up the space and the copper candle really draws out the copper tones in my pumpkin pillow that I have on the couch. But I think this just refreshes everything in my living room. I'm so, so pleased. If you guys have any questions at all about the process, if you'd consider doing this to an ottoman, a couch, a chair, anything like that, please let me know what you guys are planning on working on in your home. I would love to hear about your projects. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope y'all have a wonderful and blessed day, and I will see you guys in the next one.